Hi, this video is just going to go over how to solve higher degree polynomials using a little trickery, also known as the quadratic, uh, quadratic pattern. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to factor, we'll learn how to factor some uh, higher degree polynomials, and then we're going to use that technique to solve some. And you'll notice that these are, have a degree of 4. Um, what I'm going to do is a little bit of trickery in that I'm going to try and turn this into a quadr quadratic by um, changing this to something squared. So I'm going to take my first term of problem number 1. I'm going to turn this into x squared squared, which is actually equivalent to x to the power of 4. And then I'm really just going to put parentheses around the x squared here and just repeat the negative 8. And what I want to do is just kind of make a little mental note to myself. I am going to take my x squared and I'm just temporarily going to pretend that a is equal to x squared. Okay? And I'm going to rewrite this. So instead of x squared here, I'm going to put an a there. Okay? So let me change it to a squared minus 2a because my x squared becomes a minus 8. And the beauty of this is it's a little easier to factor a quadratic. Um, so I'm going to go ahead now and go ahead and factor this. Um, it's a quadratic with no coefficients, so I know that my first two values, if I can factor it, are a and a. Now I'm going to be looking for two numbers that multiply and give me negative 8, but add up to negative 2, the coefficient of my middle term. So I know I have to have 1 plus and 1 minus, and since they add up to 8, they must be, um, sorry, they add up to negative 2, they've got to be apart by 2, and the only ones I can think of are 4 and 2. So yeah, so it would have to be negative 4 and positive 2. Okay, now I can't forget that I did this. Now that I've done factoring it, I want to substitute the x squared back in where it should be. So I'm going to replace the a with my um, x squared there. Okay, so x squared minus 4. And then you still want to look at it and see if there's if you can do any more factoring. And I happen to notice that this second binomial is a difference of squares. And I can factor that too to x minus 2 times x plus 2. And this first part is x squared plus 2. Alrighty. So I'm going to go ahead and do the second one, but you may want to just go ahead and pause the video and try and do it yourself, and then check, um, you know, do a little fast forwarding and see if you got the right answer. But if, if you'd like to see me do it, then just go ahead and keep watching. Okay? Um, I'm going to replace my, I'm going to double check that. I think I may have written down the problem wrong, because I think that's supposed to be x, uh, 7x squared. And yep, it is. Add that back on here. Alrighty. So I'm going to turn this to x squared squared plus 7x squared plus 6. Okay, I'm, gonna I'm just going to go ahead and replace my x squared with an a. And I get a squared plus 7a plus 6. I can factor that pretty easily, I think, at least I can try to. All right, I'm going to set up my two sets of parentheses. I know my first uh, term is going to be an a, an a. I'm looking for two numbers that give me a product of 6, and they add up to 7. And um, after thinking about it for a couple seconds, I come up with 6 and 1. Because 6 times 1 is 6, but they add up to 7. And that one's done, okay? Except, I can't forget to add back my x squared. Okay, x squared plus 6, and x squared plus 1. Very nice. Now remember, I, you have to have a difference of squares to be able to factor this binomial. This is a, um, a sum of two squares, which I can't factor. So let's move on and do uh, one where I'm actually solving an equation. Okay, so I'm going to use the same, same technique. What I'm going to do is turn this into x squared squared and minus x squared. And I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides make it all equal to 0. And I'm going to replace this with a. So it's going to be a squared 
minus a minus 12 equals 0. And I'm going to try to factor this. Okay, so it should have it. We should have an a and an a. I'm got something. I need um, two numbers that give me a product of negative 12, and they add up to negative 1. So I have to have one positive and one negative. And the two numbers I can think of would be 3 and 4. They have to be one apart because they're different signs and they, ha they add up to negative 1. So um, it's going to have to be negative 4 and positive 3 equals 0. Oh, wow, this doesn't look too bad. Um, let's go ahead and plug back in the x squared. And my x squared minus 4. And now the second binomial I can continue to factor because that is the difference of squares. So that's going to be x minus 2 times x plus 2 equals 0. And the first one I can't re I can't uh, factor that any further. All right. So what we can do now is go ahead and solve each um, one of these using the zero product property. I know that one of these uh, three binomials has to equal 0. So I'm going to, I'm going to actually do that work up here on the upper right. Um, I can have x squared plus 3 equals 0. And I would turn that into x squared equals negative 3. Or x, oh sorry, I'm going to put the little square root symbol here. Um, the square root of x squared is going to be x. And that's going to equal the square root of negative 3, which is going to be i times the square root of 3. That's one of my options. The other one would be um, this one right here, if x minus 2 is equal to 0, I don't really have to write this work out. I know that x has to equal 2. So that's another possible answer. I'll put a little box around these two. And then my last one would be if x plus 2 is equal to 0, x would have to equal negative 2. Okay? So my list of possible answers are um, x, I'll just kind of write it this way, x equals plus or minus 2 um, or i times the square root of 3. And I hope you had um, enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.